Do you guys want a campaign that'll make you real sad? Did Curse of Strahd feel too bright and happy for you? Then you'll love today's sponsor. Grim Hollow. Grim Hollow is a supplement that presents a world not plagued just by classic magic villains, but painfully real wars waged by brothers, churches, and pestilence against the faith of everyone in Itharis. Running adventures using this book will reveal things about your characters and yourself you might not be aware of. Go grab it and enjoy hunting vampires while the world is consumed by more real threats that can't be solved with sword and steel. They also have a big old sale going on the first four days, which might even mean right now. So go stop by and then enjoy the video. Before I elaborate on the topic of a villain, I'm going to teach you about evil. Evil is an extremely broad concept that's described as the opposite of good, which is an equally broad concept. From my perspective, after a lot of research on the subject, evil isn't something you should use to describe someone. Now, your first thought looking at a villain is to say, well that is an evil person. But evil, as the opposite of good, is an action. Some people would call these actions sins. But at the core of every biblical sin, even beyond the action's intent, is the outcome. Evil is an action taken that puts those around you in a state of tribulation. Now any hero can make a good or evil choice, and an action can indirectly decide the fate of all those around them. I'd argue that everyone misunderstands evil due to the theory of indeterminacy. Just like light and dark, one can't exist without the other. People who endure the tribulations better understand the contrast and become a paragon of what they perceive. Well, that's, that's the end of my philosophical essay on evil. L let's, let's build a villain. Step one, to divert your expectations, is to make a hero. A strong idealist who believes in all the good the world has to offer, but has suffered little to no tribulations yet. I wrote a screenplay a couple years ago that I didn't do anything with, but it's a good example to use. The first of my heroes is a scientist, James Hinton. The second is a war hero, Alan Wilson. And the third is a businessman, Winston Mandrago. As part of this step, describe your hero's ideals, their ambitions, and what motivates them. James Hinton is a genius experimental physicist. He values innovation, creation, and freedom. I initially based him on myself. His current ambition is to create dimensional portals, a debunked field of what peers would call pseudoscience. His motivator is fear, Fear is the most valuable emotion that humans have, and the most common drive. Be it a fear of failure, of the unknown, death, isolation, or one of its other many angles. The best among us are driven to learn, so they find solace from their fears. Alan values altruism, companionship, and family. His ambitions are to meet his father's expectations of adding good to the world. And his motivator, at this time, is also a fear of disappointing those that he values. Lastly, we have Winston. He values power, intelligence, and wealth to fuel the world's future. His ambitions are somewhat self-centered, but you can't really blame him. He has a vision for a better world and is confident that only he can shepherd its arrival. His motivator is slightly more unique, as it isn't centered on the unknown. He has hope. A hope for the world to improve its own bounty so that suffering, war, and starvation come to an end. Respectable people with righteous ambitions. Now let's completely fuck them up with cause and effect. Sometimes evil surfaces not from actions, but from probability. The most common causes of evil actions are mental dispositions, jealousy, desperation, insecurity, selfishness, and most types of fear. Now to really make a villain, we need at least one of the following things to happen. Have their number of evil deeds be greater than that of their good deeds. Most villains like this have the ends justify the means mentality. Have one greatly evil deed overshadow all others. Spread a rumor that tarnishes their name, forcing them to act on insecurity. Overwhelm them with jealousy or desperation. Or amplify their selfish indulgences. You'll notice, before I twist my subjects, that they have the same goals as your average party. That's my lesson in this video if you haven't caught on. There's no such thing as a villain or an evil person. But regardless, let's start with Mr. Hinton. 
Due to his research being more or less debunked, he faces failure at nearly every turn. Terrified of failure, deeply in debt, with nowhere to turn, he becomes overwhelmed with desperation. This is his first snap. To cope with loneliness and amplify his fear, he develops minor schizophrenia and begins to lose touch with reality. As the story would progress, this mental twist allows him to make real strides in his research and earn a large grant from his friend Alan. A little note here, the more entwined your heroes are with your villains, the more fulfilling the conflict. Oftentimes, both the heroes and the villains will have identical goals, which makes them butting heads a lot more realistic. After isolating himself to complete his research, James completely loses humanity. His reasoning would be something along the lines of, if no one appreciates my work, and they all live to mock me, why should I even consider them? This is his final snap. By far the most important angle in a villain is their misunderstanding of the world. Reaching one wrong conclusion about the world alienates you from the truth and greatly shifts your moral compass. Before we analyze his current, greatly evil actions and plans, let's look at our other victims of author forced tragedy. Winston is a visionary, on par with people like Elon Musk or Bill Gates, who sees what the world can gain and actively tries to provide it. But his overwhelming awareness of his short mortal life is the crux of his eventual snap. A man with such a powerful vision can't afford to lose even a second of time or money. Incidentally, he turns away James's proposal for an absurd field of science. Now indirectly, this is his first snap. After hearing about Hinton's success, he's overwhelmed with the regret of not funding it and owning the patent. This is another important note, as people can be brought to take dark actions not out of desperation, but also regrets. I'll describe his first insurmountably evil action in just a moment. Let's move on to my third hero, Alan. Alan is a recently returned hero of war, whose wealthy father recently passed away. Hoping to help the world, but not knowing how, he offers his inheritance to an old friend, James. His actions for now are nothing but loving, kind, and humble. He builds a new life, a family, and a company of his own. This, right here, is what can easily lead someone down the path of evil. Having so much to be grateful for is the same as having so much to lose. Winston sees Alan as a threat to his plans for the future, an encroaching evil person who might shape the world in a different way. His selfishness eventually becomes his downfall as Winston lashes out in desperation. In an attempt to eliminate the competition and drop the funding, he destroys everything Alan owns. Alan, at this point, is our most tragic villain, and some could see him as an anti-hero. But as I said before, there's no such thing as a villain, or a hero, or an anti-hero. Just people living lives and doing what they think is right. Losing the entire world provides Alan with a motivator I've kept hidden from you until now. Revenge. Any good man can be vengeful if he loses his future. Keep that in mind, just in general. His life turns into a vigilante-style assault on Winston's way of life. Winston begins funding our twisted friend who sequestered himself from the world to finish his project. To keep his attack on Alan a secret and avoid more issues, Winston takes increasingly evil actions to save his own face. You could say, from his perspective, the ends justify the means. I might have lost some of you telling a story as opposed to giving bullet points, but now we have three perfectly crafted men who act evilly without hesitation. From my point of view, there are three details you need to truly understand where these people are now. How far they'll go, when they'll stop, and how they further their plans. To answer the first prompt, ask yourself what your villain values. What do they have to lose, if anything? Are they sworn by something on their own accord? Let's look at Winston to answer this. He's become somewhat of a Machiavellian and is very adept at manipulating others for personal gain. So he doesn't value relationships. He's lost sight of his generosity as it's been clouded by fear. Fear of losing his wealth and his name. No matter what, he'll sacrifice anything but how people perceive him and his investment in James. To answer the second prompt, let's look at Alan he has one emotionally blinded goal. Destroy Winston's reputation 
and then kill him. My favorite thing about this particular type of progression is once he's finally done, Alan risks becoming identical to the person he hates. Hunting monsters can turn a weak soul into a monster, and someone with a vengeance is the perfect candidate. And the last detail for any villain, which is the most important thing for telling your story, is how they achieve their goal. This is generally the only thing most people actually write. I'll use my crippled and shattered soul and mind, James Hinton. The most powerful social influence when understanding a villain is communication. Hinton has none of that, and that makes him more terrifying than any evil overlord. He is no longer human. He's an isolated host of demons that are amplified by his fears. In order to fuel his research, he needs living subjects, a complete lack of ethics, and insomnia. Delirium becomes both his only friend and his deadliest enemy. Initially, the only external effect he has are random disappearances and kidnappings in the local area. As a slave to his fears, his research, and his demons, he becomes more and more unpredictable and monstrous. Eventually, he could risk psychopathic outrages, attacking people with powerful, advanced weapons simply as a disillusioned form of revenge for all the rejection he faced. Anyone can become a villain. All it takes is a little tribulation.